I've had a little time to think about this conversation I had with this FBI agent. I don't know his name. Uh, well, I, I, don't, I don't know his full name. I know his name is Brandon. Um, he says he's from Colorado Springs. I looked up Colorado Springs FBI. They don't have a physical address. Um, so I don't know his name and I don't know where, where his office is. Um, and so my first observation is that I, I, I doubt that he's strictly from Colorado Springs if he's talking to me in this situation. So he, I think that he probably got thrown off in the beginning when I asked him um, about being from Los Angeles. So um, when I asked him about my charges I, and pending court cases, I was more specific than the list I gave, the, than the, the question that I gave him. Like, because I gave him a list of the questions I was gonna, gonna ask. And um, the question was, are there charges against me and do I have a lawyer? But instead I, I asked him specifically, do I have any pending court cases or am I, do I have anything like that? And, and then I said, that's why I don't have a lawyer. And he said, that's correct, I don't have a lawyer because I have no court cases. So, um, I, and, I'm, and then he ended up saying I'm not under arrest, which can mean anything because that, that, that sounds like law enforcement speak. Every lawyer went, oh gosh, what, what, what's going on here? All right, so, so Jeff Epstein, he never, he didn't know anything about him. He probably had a great answer for me on that one. He was like, he was the greatest pedophile of all time that happened to have all criminal informants almost uh, making accusations against him. I'm not 100% sure about that, but all I'm saying is um, I would really, I really do think that's relevant, and I think that that's something the American people have a right to know. Like, if, if there's anything, no, it's secret, it's secret that Jeff Epstein had ties to drug trafficking. No, it's not. Uh, if, if I'm saying it, it doesn't have to be secret, and I'm the one that's like, kind of, no, I, I know my organization enough, what I'm telling you is, you should probably say if, if, if Jeff Epstein was suspected of drug, drug trafficking or not, and if he was, then everyone can kind of start to wonder, I, I mean, because, like, should, you t should the FBI also tell us who was a criminal informant? Yeah, I think so. Like, and you can say, well, we don't release the names of our criminal informants, even if they're suing someone for raping them in, in, with a lie, because it's strictly based on hearsay from th 30 years ago. I'm just saying, like, we have to wonder about that. All right, so the censorship of Twitter is relevant because um, it's also relevant if, I'm, if my YouTube is being censored and I have, like, one view and the most views I've ever had is, like, 60. Um... And that's when I mentioned Daniela, the Dan Danalia or Daniela, I don't even know. All right, saying all right. So this is all relevant because in the FBI, but the FBI doesn't care if I'm being censored, according to that guy. He's blaming Twitter for my censor for for me not knowing how many followers I have and stuff like that. Um, he's he's blaming Twitter for me not having any likes. Um, so Twitter apparently everyone should know this is Twitter. Twitter will willingly out of nowhere just censor your information and what you're seeing. Twitter has that kind of control. They're, they're legally allowed to do that without war alerting you, all right, because they want to. All right, so he thought I was gonna talk about censorship the whole time, but I knew he was never gonna answer those questions. So um, I just gave him, them, gave him to him for fun. All right, so, um, but once we got to the Austin, like w w the one thing that struck me about this conversation with the FBI agent, I think, is that he does care about the NSA situation because He's an FBI agent who understands what the NSA is. The NSA, if you're the director of the NSA, you have the power to take down a country's internet. You have a power, you, you probably have the power to take down your own country's internet, almost. Uh, you have the power to spy on everyone. You have a, a power to spy, you have the power to spy on like powerful people. Uh, I mean, assuming that they don't have incredible security. Uh, when, you're the, when you're the director of the NSA, like you are the, you have the knowledge of the world compared to everyone else because you don't just have Google, you also have everyone's Facebook ever until Facebook found out about that DNS, whatever. I'm not gonna talk about it because uh, I'm afraid it's gonna get censored if I talk about it. All right, so if there's anything this guy knows from the FBI, it's that a guy that's 21 years old who doesn't have a degree, degree in chemistry or physics or whatever, probably chemistry, um, isn't gonna know how to make 
complex bombs that are booby trap type bombs. They're not just regular bombs, they're booby trap type bombs. And they're also small bombs. And what I'm telling you is the reason I mention bomb making and how I believe, it's my theory, that FBI Bakersfield, which probably has no office, they, they guarantee you they have no office. No one knows who they are. I mean, they're the ones that apparently were putting, uh, and when I say horse porn, I'm talking about women sucking horses' cocks. I'm sorry to say, I'm sorry to everyone that looked up bestiality. You shouldn't do it because even an adult, an, an adult that sees a, a horse screwing a woman will be disturbed. But a child is like, what the, oh my gosh, because I've never even seen sex. Like, yeah, maybe I've seen like some magazines that I found. All right, so um, all I'm saying is, all right, so how did the Austin bomber know how to make bombs? If there's anything that, it, that the FBI wants to know is that, and if there's anything that someone's going to lie about, it's that this guy knows how to make bombs. Because the Huffington Post article was specifically about someone lying about this guy, like, knowing how to make bombs. This person that lied, this person that lied in the media, the article that the Huffington Post removed, was about someone lying about his ability to make bombs. And the person I met had the ability to make bombs, but it's a closed case because he has my list. He, know, he knows exactly what I'm going to talk about. He knows exactly what answers he's going he's gonna to give me. And I pretty much know what answers he's going to give me too. I can't talk about that. I can't talk about that. I didn't know what he was going to say about Twitter. I'm sure that's pretty much like um, what he did all his research on. All I'm saying is um, if you're censoring my amount of followers and you're censoring my likes, you're trying to discourage people from listening to me. No one's going to take me seriously if I don't have any followers. And that was the whole point of it, because I did a hunger strike protesting the FBI that got Robert Mueller fired. So all I'm saying is, um, at some point, some of us need to start connecting the dots and realizing these FBI people... So, like, I, honestly, I think this guy, the reason he talked to me about General Nakasone is because he's, he actually believes this guy's third-generation American, and I'm telling you, well, he's third-generation spy... If there's anything I know in the history of the world, his grandpa, who was here apparently, I didn't know that, before World War II, was a spy. Because the, 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 if there's any group of people that's going to be a spy, it's the Japanese royal family coming to the United States. When the United States, what we did, like Commodore Perry comes into Tokyo Bay, not Tokyo Harbor, and he points his cannons at him and says, hey, you're going to sign a treaty with us, you're going to do trade with us or else I'm going to blow up Tokyo. I'm gonna start like like I'm just gonna like drop all kinds of cannonballs on your on, on your city, and if there's anything this guy's comparing Germany to or Japan to is Germany, where Germany we didn't bomb shit. It's like no one died like the, the British. There would be air raids, and they'd be like, "Oh, it's another air raid." They didn't even care. They got to the point they weren't even sheltering because the bombs never landed in the residential areas, like they're targeting factories. So, like, I mean, I'm just saying, like, the, 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 and the Americans got into the war late, right? That was after Pearl Harbor. The war had already been going on. So the Americans came in for a short amount of time. So, like, this whole, like, Germany hates the United States, too, because of, like, three years, or, like, I don't even know, like, five, like, pro maximum, probably six years. Probably it's more like four. I don't even freaking know. Well, I don't even know how long World War II was. It was, a, it was a really short war, wasn't it? I don't know. It was maximum ten years. I, 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 Kim Jin Ings, oh. All right, so anyways, um, what I'm trying to say is, Japan was our enemy always, and they were, and it wasn't just, it was like white people, but it's hard to explain to a lot of people. I've taken a class on Japan, I've studied, I've studied um, Japanese history in another class, and I just love Japan. Like, that's why I know so much about it, and all I'm saying is my grandpa did tell me, oh, Sean, you need to know. Them Japs are never going to forget about what we did to them. And uh, the reason he told me that is because he was Air Force. And Air Force just bombed the shit out of Japan indiscriminately. And Air Force in Germany was not bombing the cities. Air Force in Japan was like literally firebombing like paper cities that their houses were made out of paper. It's part of their, it was, it's like part of their culture having these paper houses, which are like, it's like the beauty of, 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 of like, uh, things being perishable. Um, I don't know. All right, so that's it. Um, it was a very weird conversation. I'm glad we had it. I'm glad I don't have to talk to him anymore because I'm, I'm afraid that he's going to have more 
my cousin was Lufthansa. And then if I had responded wrong, I could have made myself look real bad, but the reality is I really don't care.